So what we're going to do first is we're going to do the action, which is we're going to write together or work together for 45 minutes, and then we're going to do the dialogue, which is that we will take your questions about your work and your creative process, and we will do our best to answer them. And um, if you don't have any questions, I'll read from Emerson. Because <laughs> I brought some Emerson today. And for those of you who don't know, Emerson was a trip. He was a trip. He was amazing. Great. So a um, little plug for a dead man. And Patty, if you, so if you guys are out in the interwebs and you want to tweet in your questions, Patty has the address. You can tweet your questions at Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag New Play. Watch Me Work SLP hashtag New Play. Okay, and with that, we're going to work for 45 minutes, and you're going to help me keep time. I'm probably going to work, um, most of, usually I work on my typewriter, but today I think I have some things already on my iPad mini, so I'm going to just work on my iPad mini. And if you feel like low, think Emerson. He's great, he's amazing. Does anybody know about... Ralph Waldo Emerson. Anyway, we will if we've got other things to talk about. Um, so let's get going.
Now we're going to uh, do the dialogue part of the play. Um, I have several things. One is Emerson. One involves a story about some cooking tongs. So if we have no questions, I will refer to those things. But uh, <laughs> unless you'd like to talk about some cooking tongs, it's kind of interesting. To me, anyway. Anybody have any questions about your work and your creative process? What's that purple thing on your keyboard? Is that like a little purple layer? Oh, wow. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, it's removable. It's like gummy. Ooh. Ooh. Does it come with, does it come with, is, is there a pink one? There's a pink one, I bet, at the store. Oh, really? I'm going to get one. Okay. Anybody have any? <clears throat> Sorry, I'll just serious thing. This is a serious show. Are you listening to music? Is your library? Oh, yes. Um, I'm not always, but just then. I was listening to a song called Poor Ellen Smith on repeat because I'm learning the uh, walk from the guitar. So I figure I can have it just leak into my head. It's about some lady, it's a historical song about a woman who was shot by her lover and he told everybody to do it and then they went and caught him and he stood on the scaffold and said, I didn't do it, you're going to hang an innocent man. And right before he dropped, he said, okay, I did it. Oh. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> but it's a great, it's a great song and it's got some great lyrics and I'm learning the, the bass, uh, the, the walk, the guitar back up. <laughs> Poor Ellen Smith. Yes. So I was just listening to it on a loop, which is which is fun. Or no music, or sometimes just earplugs for silence. You know, you can listen to the sound of your own head. I'm a big fan of that too. Anybody? Yes. He's writing two characters, and what was the situation in sitting in? Sitting in a bare bones room. Right. Um, two characters in a bare bones room. And basically, what they're both frustrated in their relationship. And one is a sort of independent and minor, one career woman, like in her 20s. Right. And the other one is sort of a loner, but they're both in isolation. And one's trying to get at the other, but they're not sticking. Something keeps dragging them apart. How do you do that in terms of not having too much dialogue, but having a lot of action? It's very sparse. Now. You just figured it out. If you have a lot of action with sparse dialogue. <laughs> just said it. How do you do that? How do you how do you create a lot of action with sparse dialogue? How, well, I mean, you just said it. You create a lot. No, really. I mean, you roll your eyes. A lot of these answers, though, are. Um, because I have another book project where it's, it takes place in a, in a tube station in London, and it's about the seven seven that happens in the So that's being produced, but it can't be this. There are two questions now. One is, how do I do sparse dialogue and a lot of action? Okay, and the answer to that is, write sparse dialogue and a lot of action. 
I mean, that's exactly what it is, okay? That, so you figured out that already. So that's not a problem, okay? Just write a lot of di write a lot of action. And no dialogue. So where most people, you know, you see their page and it's top, 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 and then a little stage direction over here, da, 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 da. Yours is gonna be stage direction, stage direction, da, 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 da. beep, beep, beep. Yes. beep, beep, beep. <laughs> okay, so that's what yours is gonna be. So that's what it's gonna look like. And all you can do is go in there and fill up the blanks. Mm. It's easy, just make up some action. That's easy. She stands on one foot. She hops around. Okay, now she does a somersault. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's all. That's, that's, you figured it out already. The other thing is why is your director of your play that's about to be produced, or that's being produced, is telling you that they don't like what you've written? They don't like the way it's written. Yeah, which is kind of the yeah. same thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, can you get another director? No. Why not? You've committed. I know it's like being married. Yeah. I know. So, uh, it's so if you can. Yeah. 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 Listen to them, take their feedback, and change the play accordingly if you think that they might be right. right. Or you dig your heels in and change anywhere from nothing to a few things. A few, yes, so you're somewhere in the, you know, in that uh, area of I'm going to change some things, okay? Or you decide to change nothing, and you make that decision, and uh, keep the draft that you really like. And just see it as like, eh, I'm just trying something. I mean, it's, you know. And the, but the thing is, is that you're in a difficult situation. You do not necessarily have to suffer. <laughs> you know, this is the thing about life. You're going to piss people off. If you are true to yourself and you stick up for things that are important to you, Sooner or later, somebody's gonna get mad at you. And you know what? Yeah. They're gonna get mad at you. If they're getting mad at you for the right reasons, you're being kind, courteous, and generous, and sticking up for something that you need to stick up for, meaning yourself, sure. then people are gonna get mad at you. Yeah. Let them, well, what can you do? You, you know, if you're gonna tiptoe through life hoping that nobody gets mad at you, then that's, that's tough. That's the tough for you. That's going to be tough. That's called people pleasing, and there's a program for that. <laughs> you know, people please. You know, we as playwrights don't need to be people pleasers. I think, for me, in my experience, we need to answer to our characters. going to run through the neighborhood provoking people to get mad at you. That's an extreme and the other, and there's a program for that too, okay? So it's neither of those things. It's just standing up for yourself. And it, the best you can do is just muddle through it, muddle through it. You know, that's the great thing about having a plan. You can have it done in another city, another town, another time. You know, but, but I, I would say, I would, I would suggest that you speak your mind to these people when appropriate and in an appropriate and helpful way. And that's a skill that you're going to be learning. Welcome to the theater. Anybody else? Stacy, your shoes. I'll just call them. They're just big. I know. I like them. I've They're not cool. had to buy snow boots since 1995, so I'm really <laughs> enjoying them. Oh my gosh. I lived in Charlotte, so it's not oh, yeah. a But yeah. Um, how do you deal with writing? Because I'm sure you <laughs> well, that too. But no, writing multiple things at once, like I'm enjoying it, Yeah. but I don't want to burn out. Like I'm really enjoying me, 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 about four stories. Right. But it's, and they're different mediums, and I'm good with that. Yeah. But it's just like, I just pace. Is it pacing? Yeah, 
Yeah, so Stacy's writing four different things, four different projects, four different stories, and she's asking how do we keep that up and we don't burn out. Yeah, sometimes you burn out. But sometimes a car runs out of gas, you gotta go to the gas station. You know what I mean? Sometimes you gotta, you know, you're on a road trip, you gotta pee. You know what I mean? I, I wanna go to the zoo and pee! You know, then that's like the lady who, you know, wore the diaper and went to kill the, the astronaut, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, you know, I'm just saying, think about it, right? We don't want to go there. We don't want to go there. You want to stop, take a break. Sometimes you're going to burn out. Sometimes you're going to wake up and not want to do any of the four projects. Sometimes you're going to want to just, you know, whatever, go for a walk or whatever. And that's okay. And that's okay. If you love them all and you have made time in the day for all of them, you know, make time of the week or however you're scheduling your time, which is major, which sounds like you figured out, which is great. Um, then just keep doing it. I mean, some people work on only one thing at one time, you know, and just other people can work on two or three things or four things or eight things or whatever. And, um, I think like I resisted it for a long time. Um, like, I try to force myself to work on one thing at a time. But what I'm finding is that it actually helps for me to work more and more. Like, I, everybody's process is di different, I guess. And I feel it all, it takes longer for me to kind of get tired when I'm working on different things because I'm hopping into different worlds and it's just not that constant, you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, really, in reality, you're only, I believe that you're only working on one thing at one time. Really. And that's the sort of really, because. When you're working on, say, Project A, you're only working on Project A. And then, and the, and then you work on Project A for an hour, and then you turn to Project F, and you only work on Project F, so you're actually really working on one thing at one time. And it's important to remember that that's how you are successful in doing that. You're thoroughly immersed in what's in front of you, and then you switch channels. Like you're watching 27 channels at the same time. No, only one at a time. But you can switch the channels. Yeah. And some people, some, some people, like, I have ADHD, right? And when I'm working on something, I can work on music for that quick, I can work on this text for that quick, I can work on this for that quick. It takes me a little bit of a while if I'm working in that mode. Because I'm so immersed in the one thing I'm doing that has three tentacles. Right. You know, yeah. and I imagine a huge office of that. Right. <laughs> you know. Is that a part of your, is that ADHD, that's what ADHD is? What? Is it what the just form? talking about tentacles? Um, well, ADHD is sort of like that. Yeah. It is? It is sort of like that. Attention deficit is sort of like that. Sounds like you have attention, whatever it is. Sounds like you're really good at concentrating. Rarely. Sounds like you're great at it, actually. Sounds like I know people who really, you know, really want to be able to do that. But it's great to be able to concentrate, whether you do one thing at once or something. The main thing is to just be able to sit down, plug into your thing, and focus. And it's funny because you're talking about the time capsule. We? No. Oh. ADHD people. Oh, yeah. Are totally the time capsule. I love these. Back in the day. Yeah. Did you know anything? I don't think it exists. It's like no. the terrible twos. Everyone tells me because my son is, is almost two and a half, and when he became two, uh, I had a legion of people, legion strangers, literally running up to me. Oh my God, now prepare! But no, my God, you know, mom. <laughs> they would really uh, people foaming at the mouth trying to give me, you know, it's like doom is coming, and I was just like, I don't know. Let me see. Haven't seen it yet. We're almost. There half point, so I think it takes two. The terrible twos take two. I don't think he's participating. I might be. Come on, give it to me. Anyway. Remind me of your name. Eric, how are you, Eric? It's good to see you. You working? Yeah. Yeah, how's it going? Uh, yeah, then I go into the, the shoot. I know. I'm okay. I'm having the that was a short film and it's 
stories were getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I started realizing how much sort of like autobiography I was putting into it that I didn't think I was. And now I'm seeing that it is. And part of me like doesn't want to sort of like rely on that in a way because like I don't really know how to say this, but like part of me doesn't uh, part of me is nervous that it's becoming so sense and I'm not I'm not sure whether I should be concerned that like putting parts in and mostly emotional stuff not like actual plot moments okay. not like oh this happened in my life so I'm doing this but right. like the, 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 the foundational like motivations and feelings or lack of motivations or lack of acts and things like that like, right. so I, I get a little concerned every now and then when something so much that like am I is this actually the easy way out rather than making a more interesting story? Do you think the story is the screenplay story is working as a it's story? Well I mean that's the that's why like I'm trying not to worry too much about it because I actually finally feel like it is starting to work. Whereas like I was having a lot of trouble with it before. Right. Right. So I mean, yeah. mostly I'm just going with it, but that's yeah. like what I'm... Uh-huh, uh-huh. I, it, it sounds like it's going well. And, and it sounds like it's going well, and sometimes that little, oh, you know, it's, it's too much of you in the, in the, in the screenplay now. It's gonna be, oh, it's all about you now. It's going to be all about you. Yeah. That's some, you know, bullshit, chat, 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 chat in your head that you just need to... It's working. It feels good. It feels good. You can still have a critical eye to it. You can still cut and rewrite as needed. And good, you're not so attached to the moments. You know, you can't cut and rewrite where necessary. It's feeling good. It sounds like it's working. I would say if it's working, keep going. And if you can recognize yourself, your, your emotional beats in the screenplay, that's not a crime. It's really not. I mean, I have the book of crimes. You know, that's not a crime. I should get one of those wigs. I'll be the judge. <laughs> Yeah, white wig and be like, oh, big yeah, a big powder puff thing. I'll have a big book crimes that writers commit. You know, that's not in the crime book. Yeah, no, no. No, that's I, that's a good one. That's a good one to do. You you're part of it. You put yourself in there. It's all right. I think so. You want to hear about the tongs? Not gonna lie. Okay, well, the tongs, the cooking tongs. Everybody know what cooking tongs are? You know, the same thing, you know, about this long. They're covered with some kind of substance to make them, you know, you can put them on the stove and make it hot, you know, to the touch of wood. So, um, my son picked them up uh, a couple days ago and put them on his ears <laughs> and called Grandma and walked around the house talking to Grandma with him. And I was just, and he was well, interesting to hear, but hi, Grandma, how are you doing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He was listening and talking. And I'm like, what, what's with the tongs? And then I realized that the tongs look <laughs> hanging down. And then I started thinking, where does imagination come from? Because we're not, well, at least he was not born making things up. And some, I started thinking about imagination, where it comes from, where it might come from. And part of the ingredients are lack. You miss something. And the urge to be united with something that is not there. And so we walk around sometimes, we go, gosh, I don't have this, or this isn't working out, or this fell through, or these kinds of things. And we, and we berate ourselves, and chide ourselves, or mad at ourselves because things, we don't have everything we want. And yet, imagination, uh, one of the ingredients of imagination, as I observed it, is lack. He misses his grandma, and so he, he creates something so he can call grandma on the phone. He didn't ask me for my phone. He actually wanted to pretend that he was calling. He didn't want to talk to me, he wanted to pretend. Which, is, which was one of the first times I saw him pretend to do something. Which is really interesting. So uh, that's the cooking challenge. Now he calls her all the time. And then I talk to her. Tell him to do, grandma's told you to do this. Yeah, it's very helpful. 
Getting now or whatever, but I think that lack creates a place for magic to happen. Actually, it's true. I'm going to read some questions. Are we are we out of time? Or we have a question. Yeah. I'm going to read some questions. Somebody else has a question. Yes. He's a trip. Oh, 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 There is a guidance for each of us, and by lowly listening, we shall hear the right word. Place yourself in the middle of the stream of power and wisdom, which animates all whom it floats, and you are without effort impelled to the truth, to the right, and the perfect contentment. There is a guidance for each of us, and by lowly listening, we hear the right word. Listening, not like you know, highfalutin conversation with smart people, but lowly listening, which is quiet, small, modest kind of industry. Sitting down and just taking out your pen and your paper, your notebook, or your laptop, or whatever, and putting the time in. And there the, comes the voice from there. So, we done? Good? What page is this? Um, it's page 79, and it's in the, the essay called Spiritual Laws. Thank you. 